very grateful to have with us three guests. We have Michelle Steeb. She knows a lot about this topic. For 13 years, she was the CEO of St. John's Program for Real Change, supporting homeless women and children in Sacramento. And you have a new book out called Answers Behind the Red Door, Battling the Homeless Epidemic. And Brenda Gilchrist, a resident turned activist in Santa Rosa, California, who saw her community dramatically change under this policy. And Chris Keyes, formerly homeless himself, now the director of Shelter and Recovery Ministries at the Redwood Gospel Mission in Santa Rosa. Welcome to all of you. Thank you. Thank you. Michelle, why don't we start with you and just give us the basics of what the Housing First strategy is and when it was adopted nationally. Yes, yeah, so Housing First was put in place uh, as an intervention for the chronically homeless uh, population in New York City, largely people living on the streets, suffering from mental illness and addiction. That was back in the 90s. In the 2000s, in the Bush administration, it was uh, adopted as a treatment plan, if you will, for that same population. It was a, a population that at that time was growing and the Bush administration introduced it as a intervention for that population. In the 2011 to 2013 timeframe under the Obama Biden administration, Housing First without any evidence uh, that it would work for a population different than the population it was designed for uh, was rolled out as a one-size-fits-all uh, solution to homelessness, meaning that the, you know, between two and three million people right now that are struggling with homelessness would all be able to be treated with the exact same treatment plan. Um, this uh, was, as a, as a, as an intervention, it was promised uh, by HUD, which is, by the way, the largest funder of homelessness. It was promised that this intervention would end homelessness in a decade. In October of last year, the data was finally released that not only has housing not ended homelessness, despite a 200% spending increase on homelessness over the time it's been implemented, uh, that homelessness has increased over 16% nationwide and almost 21% in the unsheltered population, meaning largely people living on the streets. So it's been a massive failure. So Brenda, you saw this come into your community in Santa Rosa. Can you describe what you saw, what happened? I can, and thanks for having me on. And um, Santa Rosa City Council and um, the Board of Supervisors, they decided to implement Housing First to end homelessness in our city. Um, and after five years, Santa Rosa became the fifth largest homeless population in the nation in the United States. And so what we saw throughout um, Santa Rosa over this five year period of time of Housing First was our parks, our bike trails, our waterways, um, industrial areas, residential areas full of transients. And what we saw was there was prostitution, open drug use, drug deals. Um, at one point, I didn't believe how bad the bike trail was, so I went out and rode my bike with some friends. And we rode through a 300 person illegal encampment. And people are thinking, if I just am homeless and I get a place nicer than the one I have now, People are just going to, they're thrown in the towel. And that's what's happening. We're finding that through a lot of interviews that people that were just getting by check to check thought, what the heck, I might as well be homeless because I could get something better, uh, if it, which isn't even the case either. It's not, I haven't seen evidence of that actually happening. The numbers out of the COC were staggering a couple months ago about uh, outcomes. They were not good. And, and, and I think that for a small percentage of people, uh, housing first can be great, maybe for, for a grandmother or a grandfather who has never been homeless before and it's not safe for them to be out and they don't have any resources on the streets, it's great for them. But the biggest problem, like it's been mentioned, is the mental health and the addiction. And I was on the street 14 years, 13, 14 years ago, and I can guarantee you that I wouldn't be here talking to you right now if somebody gave me the keys to a house.